Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at novel silos and prodrugs for treatment resistant anxiety disorders. This work was carried out by the Ficini Group and was published in J Medchem. Depression and anxiety are closely related disorders, yet despite affecting millions of people worldwide, they still remain poorly understood and poorly treated. Current therapies are limited to selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, selective serotonin norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, SNRIs, and benzodiazepines. Though not used in clinical settings, psilocin has been widely used to treat these disorders. However, the psychedelic trip is too long, which requires extensive clinical supervision. This prolonged trip can also prolong toxic side effects and undesired, unpleasant psychedelic experiences. These drawbacks have limited the therapeutic use of psilocin and demonstrate a clear need for faster acting psychotherapeutics. Psilocin is not typically administered in its active form, and instead, its natural prodrug psilocybin is ingested. When psilocybin is ingested, it undergoes dephosphorylation by hepatic and intestinal alkaline phosphatases to reveal the bioactive psilocin. This dephosphorylation can be quite slow, leading to peak plasma concentrations two hours after administration, with the psilocin remaining in circulation for up to 24 hours. With these drawbacks in mind, the central hypothesis of this paper is to see if faster metabolizing prodrugs can be created by swapping the phosphate for different enzymatically labeled groups. If this can be achieved, it should lead to drugs that generate a shorter, more intense trip with a stronger therapeutic effect. So let's look at how to synthesize these molecules. The synthesis begins with the acylation of a benzyl-protected 4-hydroxyindole compound. The electron-rich aromatic system reacts in an enamine-type fashion through the C3 position, adding to the acyl chloride and eliminating an equivalent of HCl. The resulting aminium species then undergoes an elimination to restore aromaticity in the indole ring, and dimethylamine then adds to the remaining acyl chloride. This forms the amide, which was precipitated from solution and taken forward without further purification. In the next step, the carbonyl groups were reduced using lithal. This adds a hydride to the carbonyl centre, and the negatively charged oxygen species is stabilised by coordination to the lithium cation. This can react once again with lithal displacing the oxygen atom with another hydride, reducing the amide down to an amine. The ketone is also reduced by lithal in a similar fashion. With the side chain amine now installed, the benzyl group could be deprotected using catalytic hydrogenation over palladium and carbon to yield silicin with a total yield of 38%. To install the different prodrug functionalities, the hydroxyl group could be reacted with a halide electrophile in the presence of base to produce most of the target compounds in good yield. However, they found that for some groups, the indole nitrogen also acted as a nucleophile, and therefore they protected this as a TIPS group using HMDS and TIPS chloride prior to the debenzylation. With this TIPS group in place, they could then functionalize the hydroxyl group and selectively deprotect the TIPS group using TBAF. Utilizing this synthetic strategy, they created 28 different prodrugs, belonging to 9 different classes. These include esters, carbonates, silyl ethers, thiocarbonates, ether esters, phosphates, ether carbonates, a phosphoramidite, which we've previously seen used as a prodrug for antiviral compounds, and finally, a simple ether. To begin their investigation into these compounds' bioactivity, they first looked at the metabolism of the compounds using in vitro assays. This is important, as the natural compound psilocybin undergoes significant first-pass metabolism before reaching circulation, with different cells metabolizing it at different rates. The concentration of psilocin in the blood serum correlates to the trip length, and this is dependent on the kinetics of all these different cell processes. Therefore, the metabolism by different cell types needs to be accounted for. To do this, they use material isolated from cells. These include microsomes, which are vesicles formed from pieces of the endoplasmic reticulum and contain enzymes involved in drug metabolism. 
They also used the S9 fraction. This is a supranatant fraction obtained from an organ homogenate by centrifuging it for 20 minutes at 9000 G. This contains enzymes from the cytosol in addition to microsomal components. We can see the results of this assay in the table shown here, where they analyzed the half-life of the compounds in an aqueous buffer, the liver S9 fraction, liver microsomes, intestinal S9 fraction, intestinal microsomes, and also in blood serum. They also tested psilocybin, in addition to the novel prodrugs. By looking at the aqueous stability, we can immediately see that six of the compounds are poor candidates as they spontaneously hydrolyze in aqueous solution. This indicates that they would not be suitable for IV injection and will likely suffer problems with long-term stability. Four compounds in particular stood out as promising, as these are stable in aqueous buffer but show low half-lives in all of the media tested. This indicates that they are very susceptible to enzymatic hydrolysis and will likely be very quickly metabolized in the body. In addition to looking at the half-life, the researchers also looked at the endpoint silicin concentration. These four compounds all showed relatively high levels of silicin after two hours, confirming that these are acting as prodrugs to liberate silicin. In these assays, psilocybin, the natural prodrug of silicin, only underwent metabolism in the intestinal fractions and did not generate silicin in either the liver or serum samples. These four novel prodrugs, however, all showed relatively high levels of silicin after two hours, indicating that these groups are very susceptible to hydrolysis. It is interesting to note that two of the compounds, C01 and EE03, underwent metabolism in the previous assays, but did not generate any detectable silicin. This is likely due to other metabolites being generated upon metabolism and may be influenced by the groups on the indole nitrogen. With these in vitro assays completed, they then moved into live animals and conducted in vivo studies. A selection of the compounds were injected into mice at a concentration of 1 mg per kilogram and blood samples were collected over a 24 hour period. From these samples, they could determine the peak maximum silicin concentration and also the total silicin exposure, which was calculated as the area under the curve over the 24 hour period. From these results, we can see that all of the compounds tested successfully produced silicin in vivo, including the compound C01, which was included as a negative control, as it showed poor activity in the in vitro assays. Interestingly, the thiocarbonate compound T01 generated more silicin than the positive control psilocybin. This may be due to its susceptibility to enzymatic hydrolysis by circulating esterases, as the previous assays showed a high conversion to silicin in the serum samples. This metabolism in circulation may allow it to bypass the hepatic first pass mechanism. These assays were also conducted using oral administration of the compounds. These were studied at a concentration of 1, 3 and 10 mg per kg and the peak and total silicin exposures were recorded. At a concentration of 1 mg per kg, none of the compounds tested matched the activity of psilocybin. However, this difference was reduced at 3 mg per kg and at a concentration of 10 mg per kg, the compound C02 showed an almost identical activity to psilocybin. This compound features a benzyl carbonate prodrug moiety, and it is possible that this hydrophobic moiety may increase its cell permeability. Taking a deeper look at the pharmacokinetics of these compounds, we can see that when both psilocybin and the test compounds are orally administered at a concentration of 10 mg per kg, the novel prodrugs show a similar psilocin concentration in the plasma for the first 8 hours, however they are completely eliminated by 24 hours. In contrast, the psilocybin control sample still showed psilocin in the plasma after 24 hours. Reducing the psilocybin concentration to just 3 mg per kg still showed a residual psilocin concentration at 24 hours, highlighting the advantages of the novel prodrugs as more rapidly metabolized generators of psilocin. Having proved that these compounds can generate psilocin in vitro, the researchers then sought to determine their psychedelic activity. To do this, they used a head twitch response assay. This assay has been widely used as a behavioral proxy for psychedelic activity experienced by the test subjects. This response has been strongly correlated with the potency of administered hallucinogens using known psychoactive compounds. 
To carry out this assay, the compounds were orally administered to mice, and their behaviour was then monitored by video. The frequency of head twitching was then analysed by a technician who was blinded to the treatment and control groups. Looking at the data for psilocybin, we can see that the peak intensity occurred within the 15-20 to 20 minute observation window post-administration. They therefore used this observation window to evaluate the head twitch response for the compounds tested. From this data, we can see that all of the compounds showed psychedelic activity above the negative control. However, only two stood out as particularly potent. The ester pro drugs ESO1, which was more potent than psilocybin, and ESO3, which showed a similar psychedelic activity to psilocybin. The compound T01, which previously looked very promising from the pharmacokinetic studies, did show psychedelic activity. However, its activity was approximately half that of psilocybin. Having determined that these novel prodrugs are active psychedelics, they then sought to determine their activity against anxiety. This was done using a marble burying test, which has previously been used to predict the anxiolytic and anticompulsive pharmacological potential of novel compounds. This assay works by applying a chronic stress to the test subjects, which induces a hedonic deficit and other depressive-like symptoms. In these studies, they used a daily 30-minute restraint session in combination with an oral corticosterone, which increases the stress response. They then observed the mice to see how many marbles they would bury, which is a behaviour they exhibit when stressed. From these results, we can see that the stressed mice buried more marbles than their unstressed counterparts, while the mice who were treated with psilocybin buried almost the same amount. The mice who were treated with the novel prodrugs also buried fewer marbles than their stressed counterparts, with those who were treated with the ES01 burying a similar amount of marbles to the control sample. These results were consistent on day 1 and day 7 of the study, showing that these compounds have a persistent anti-anxiety effect. So with this confirmation of the novel compounds in vivo biological activity, we come to the end of this paper. The important takeaways of this study are the novel synthetic routes used to generate the prodrugs, the confirmation of the hypothesis that modification of the 4-hydroxyl group can change the pharmacokinetic profile of the compounds, and that these compounds can be metabolized to produce psilocin in vivo. Most interestingly, these compounds retain the anxiolytic benefit of psilocin and were able to successfully treat anxiety in mice. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. Join me in the next one, where we will look at the total synthesis of arcangiumide.